Hi there, my name is Kenny Jang. I'm here with Church Butler. Today I want to share uh, some highlights from an article I was able to write for Ministry Team Magazine. Wrote the cover article, it's called Planning for Easter, Online Advertising is Easier Than You Think. And so uh, it's a great article, it's a great magazine if you wanted to pick it up. But I want to go over some highlights from that and basically, the question that was pitched is, should your church advertise online for Easter this year? Should your church advertise online at all for Easter this year? And here is a couple of highlights and some tips and some suggestions to help really make it a little bit easier to embrace this idea and maybe just test it out for the first time this year. But before we begin, just let me share uh, my business that I um, have run is Church Butler for the last couple of years. We put social media to work for you so that you can just focus on engaging with people online. Uh, basically, it's a service that provides church uh, social media content, uh, images, and videos for every single day of the month and the year. Uh, welcome to check it out at www.butler.church. Um, here's my contact information on the screen. I love engaging with people just like you and your church teams. Reach out to me for um, conversations on any of the topics that we'll cover today or other things related to social media and the church. Okay, so let's get started. I want to talk about three things that ads can do for your church. Uh, the first thing is that ads allow you to target very specific community segments um, online. The fact that you have um, all these uh, ability to, all these ways to slice and dice um, all the audiences that are available online to you is fantastic. It's something that marketers today should be taking advantage of in terms of targeting specific demographic groups, targeting specific behaviors, affinity groups, etc. cetera. Um, this way you can use your ad budget that you might have, whatever, however small or however large it is, in the most efficient way possible. So that's the first thing. Targeting is something that ads allow you to do today. Um, second is that it actually allows you to influence perceptions or re the reputation for your church. Um, there's this, the 7-Eleven rule, right? It's basically consumers need 7 to 11 brand impressions before they start to actually make uh, considerable decisions in their mind uh, for whatever call to action you're putting in front of them. So um, you're able to put multiple impressions of ads, and, and most ad networks here are performance-based, meaning that you don't pay for any ads that get served unless they click on them or take you up on the offer and fall through the call to action. And so this is, uh, again, another efficient way of using your ad budget to show ads over and over and over again, to reinforce the messaging that you want to put out there about your dynamic church, about your vibrant community, about all the good and transformation that you're doing, not only for your specific congregation members, but for the people you're trying to reach outside in your community and beyond. Um, so influencing perceptions or the reputation of your church using ads is a very efficient and strategic way to do that. The third one is uh, very practical. By using that rule of 7-Eleven and by using targeting, you could take people who have visited your church, put them into a very specific targeted group. They call it custom audiences on Facebook. Um, Google AdWords has the same type of capability where you can target specific groups of people. So in this case, you can take people who came to your services on Easter alone and then give them specific ads and messages that might refer back to the Easter message, might say that, hey, we've got more. Hey, did you visit us on Easter? Um, here's more coming up this Sunday. Um, those are the types of things that you can do with these targeted ads to retarget people over and over and over then to make them come back as second time visitors, third time visitors and beyond. That, that's the third thing that ads can really do. Um, now, there are various formats of ads available, right? So you've got paid search engine ads. Uh, Google AdWords is a big driver of that. If you are a 501c3 nonprofit, there is a Google nonprofit AdWords ad grant program that offers you up to $10,000 worth of free 
ad budget a month. That's right. That's $120,000 ad budget that you have the capacity to spend every single year, um, year in, year out, if you qualify for the grant. And um, it's something that, you know, some people um, really take advantage of that um, and drive a lot of traffic. I mean, you can talk about um, managing an account. Some of the accounts that we manage for our church partners have um, 6,000, 7,000 unique visitors a month going to their church website. Can you just imagine having that type of traffic to your site in any given month? So anyway, that's just one option there. Um, Social media, obviously, there are a lot of ad options out there. Facebook ads are something that every single ministry should be thinking about and, and, and putting some budget away to put into Facebook ads. And then Instagram ads are just one of the most efficient marketplaces right now in terms of CPMs getting um, you know your impressions out there for people to really engage with your church again to um, reach new people and target them to uh, influence the perception and also to get people to come back Instagram ads are very efficient these days and then video ads um, are something that I think everybody is going to start to explore if they haven't started already you can create videos and put them up on social media networks like Facebook and Instagram and promote those as ads and then there's all of, of course YouTube ads pre-roll mid-roll all different types of formats that are available on YouTube and other places as well. There's one additional ad medium or channel that I'd love to talk about today that I don't think many churches are thinking about, uh, but it is something that's available to almost everyone across the United States. And it's uh, something that you can get in for as low as just $25 for a campaign. Uh, Really easy to test out. And it's something easy to stand out because not many other churches are in that space as well. And that is streaming music platform advertising streaming music platform advertising. i'm talking about spotify the number one category leader there and of course pandora as the second um player in the streaming music market those two platforms are advertiser friendly they have self-service options you don't need to get an an ad rep or an ad buyer um, you can actually just go on almost like you can with facebook or with Google ads and create your own ads um, to to test out. And again, the budget requirement is very low to start. And so it's something that almost every single church watching today can really seriously experiment. And it's really not that complicated. So I wanted to do what I wanted to do today is just walk through some of the screenshots of what you would do to set up an ad on Spotify to show you just how easy it really is. And by the end of today, um, you and your team can actually just sit down and go through and, and create an experimental ad and see what happens. See if you actually get some traffic. See if you actually get some traction um, through this. So let's go through it. So first of all, um, there are multiple categories of ad formats available today. The the streaming music ad category has flourished. Um, it used to be audio only, but now there's um, banner ads that we call display ads visual just static images that can be shown both on mobile or desktop players right or there's even video ads that can be shown across these networks too again you can interrupt um the 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 experience with ads you can put them in between um there's display ads that are not as intrusive there's all these different things there's there's takeover ads overlay ads there's so many different types of ads but the very basic one is the audio ad, right? It's like a radio ad that you can produce. Um, So before we even get to that part, let me just make the use case for it, right? So um, look at the demographics of Spotify's users. Uh, The millions and millions of people that are listening and paying for premium services also are just is growing uh, month by month, right? Um, Even forget about audio on the on-demand video side, right? Almost 60% of the U.S. is now subscribing to services like Netflix. And so Spotify and Pandora and music um, is uh, going to increase increase only um, more rapidly over the next year or two uh, to the point where it probably will match the video uh, subscription usage. So anyway, look at the, the age demographic breakdown here of Spotify. We're looking at a sweet spot of 18 to 24 year olds, 25 to 34 year olds, 
Um, if you talk to any pastor or church leader and say, hey, in my community, who would be the ideal candidate for a, a first-time visitor? And they probably would be saying it's not the um, the, the fringe engine, ends of the demographic spectrum, but it probably is a sweet spot of if I can get a whole bunch of 18 to 34-year-olds in the door on a regular basis, then I'm going to be in a good place um, six months, one year, two years out from now. Even the 35 to 44, 45 age range, you're looking here, 14%, almost 15%. That's pretty significant. Um, so this sweet spot of the demographics just works for most churches in, in terms of what they're doing. Now, in terms of targeting, um, Spotify and Pandora allows you to target based on location, which is key. Because otherwise, you wouldn't want to use these vehicles for advertising. You want to be able to uh, specify a specific, um, not just the country or region, but more like a city or even zip codes or other um, demogra- uh, geographic location insights that they provide. So on a city basis, you're able to target just your zip codes of the people that are living within driving distance of your church. That's the first part. Second one is time of day. You can actually do what we call day parting. So just testing out drive time, or you can test out if you're looking for people who are going to work and listen to music at work, you can try, try that. If you want to do um, you know, nighttime, evening, uh, leisure time, Saturdays or Sunday mornings, you could do that as well, right? So even early Sunday morning before, as everyone's getting up to go to church, you can create some type of ad that says, hey, um, this is so-and-so church. We're open and ready for you. We're waiting for you. We'll save a seat for you. You can have that type of ad run Sunday mornings before your church services and be very, very efficient in your ad buy, in your budget. Um, More than location and more than time of day, it's the interests and behaviors. Those are that type of targeting, which is something that I think most churches are going to really see the benefit of. Um, You could just see that you uh, you can target people who are parents with children in their household or new parents with babies or couples, engaged and getting married couples in your town or city. Uh, just that, those three categories alone um, is appealing to most churches and church leaders, I would think. Um, there's definitely other places that you would uh, try to figure out how to um, match the, the content of the ad with specific interests that you might have uh, to be able to, uh, to target here on Spotify. Um, here's the big kicker and the bonus. And this is one of the reasons why I, I highly recommend every single church at least test this out is because they've made it dead drop simple, drop dead simple. Um, it's basically you can create ads on a self-serve basis, but they will actually produce the voiceover and professional narration of the ad for you for free, for free. Um, so let's let's go through this process and go through the screenshots to show you what I mean. Uh, so first you have to choose an objective as you set up the ad for the first time. Are you gonna try to raise awareness? Um, are you just trying to get exposure for your brand? Or are you trying to specifically uh, promote a concert or some type of music related content? So if you're a band, if you are a musician, if you're an independent artist, you would pick the second one, but for churches, you would actually pick the first option, raising awareness for your brand, business, or organization. And then you would name your ad, and then you go through, and you can actually go through the targeting, as we talked about, and there's drop-downs where you can actually actually choose by music, by genre. Um, There's there's playlists that you can um, choose interest by. So those are the types of demographic cuts that you're able to target. Now, um, this is the powerful part. You can create a 30 second ad professionally or by yourself or with your team and upload that ad here. And they have their own specifications and and tips and and best practices that they give you. But if you wanna request Spotify to produce the ad for you, they'll do it for free. All you have to do is write a script. And what they do is um, they let you choose a voiceover, a, a narration, a voice talent, and then background music, and they put it all together. It's quite amazing. A 30-second audio ad uh, that you write and then gets professionally produced with music comes out. Um, and most times, I would think that um, you would think it's just it's just an amazing service that they offer for free. Um, so to continue on, you, you select your actual location. 
uh, country, state, uh, city, or one of the f 50 major DMAs uh, around the country, the actual uh, the marketing type of uh, targeted areas. And then you choose your age range and then gender. Um, the one other choice that you have is what type of platform technology that you want this to show up on. And again, you have the ability whenever you target or choose any of these variables, you can actually customize ads knowing the type of environment that the ads are going to be playing in. So you might want to um, if you're only doing mobile, iOS, or Android, you might have uh, some ad copy that refers to being on the go or being mobile. Um, but if you're talking about desktop ads, you might some talk about being in the office or being at home. Um, or if, like in this case, we're checking all just to get the generic exposure to the entire area. So um, the last part is to create some sort of landing page clickable image. So you create something, again, it's very easy. You can click some, uh, create something that's 640 by 640. Um, you can do it in Canva or Crello um, and basically just upload the image here. You're going to put a headline and then you're going to put a click-through location. So basically when someone clicks on your ad or someone actually does something with your ad, it, it typically will go to a landing page. And then once they click that image, then it can go to your site. Again, uh, we, we always suggest when you're doing ads like this, that you create a landing page on your church's website. Don't send them to your homepage. Don't let make them figure out where to go. Send them to a specific landing page that was set up um, just for the whole purpose of this ad or the, for the whole purpose of this event or whatever the call to action is. So whatever it is, yourchurch.com or .org slash Easter or Easter 2019 might be a place to send them to. And there you can have very um, detailed information about when your services are happening, what time they're happening, um, where they're happening, maybe uh, some FAQs about what to wear, um, parking, children, kids, uh, you know, child care coverage, all that kind of stuff can be put on that page or that section of the site. So you don't need to send them to your homepage and then they might get lost or abandon their visit. You want to send them to something, someplace that's very targeted and useful for that, that task of learning more about Easter. Um, now, here's the good part. When you go through all of your targeting parameters, you can get ads as low as one and a half to two and a half cents per ad served. That's quite cheap. One and a half to two and a half cents. Now, you're not going to be able to do that for all demographic cuts that you do. But if you play around with the demographics, you can actually get that, that type of budget. And you can start with an ad budget of $25 or $50 or $100 and see what you get so you can learn this platform for the first time. Again, Ad Studio, the self-serve the self area, um, you can put in any type of total budget. Um, and $25 is the absolute minimum. So it makes it affordable for anybody. You create a start and end date or start and time, um, and you control when the ads go live. So um, that's an example and suggestion to test out streaming music platforms this year for online ads for Easter. Um, it's going to be very efficient. You're going to get people noticing it because um, most of the people in your congregation and in your community, they're using Spotify, they're using Pandora, they're using these services, and especially the sweet spot demographics that you want to reach and have coming through the doors as a new first time visitor, they're on these services. Um, if you just look at the media kits for each of these um, streaming media, media music providers, you'll see that millions of people are using it and they're, they're logged in all day, they're listening to um, I forgot the stat, but they're listening to an incredible number of hours per day um, so that your ads have the ability to reach them where they are whenever, pretty much whenever you want to get to them. So streaming music platform ad services, if any of you guys are using this already, I would love to talk to you because I'd love to interview you for um, a podcast or a guest blog post and really share with other people uh, concrete details and the outcomes of any of the campaigns that you've done. If you're willing to actually go through a test campaign, I'd love to walk through a test campaign with you 
and help guide you through the choices and we can see what happens, uh, reach out to me. Um, again, um, Church Butler is a place that you can get uh, more information on our blog about this and you can actually get a download of the ministry team um, article that I have here. There's a PDF that we can actually send you. Um, just check out the offer on our blog at Church Butler. And um, here's one more um, offer that I'll make available. If you go to Church Butler and sign up today um, and use the promo code EASTER, uh, we'll give you a free trial for a full month, which means it will get you from now until um, the beginning of April, you'll have enough graphics and uh, content to produce and, and put to download and put on your social media accounts for every single day uh, for the next 30 days and, and show you what this might actually be able to free you up for as you count down to Easter. So use the promo code EASTER um, at www.butler.church. Again, reach out to me. My name is Kenny Jang. I'm available on all the major networks and uh, you can email me at kenny at butler.church. Thanks for listening today and I hope uh, to hear from some of you and enjoy the rest of today's summit. Um, I hope to catch you online sometime soon.